So last episode I built a farm for these guys and I got one trident but I still need one more. This is going to be a big episode today. I need to make this farm more efficient, there's a problem with my base that I need to fix, and I need to enchant the two tridents that I am going to get and I somehow landed on this strip exactly. Let us start with the trident farm. It works very well. It's spawning a good amount of drowned as you can see in there. Also this farm is producing a good amount of salmon around here since the salmon just drop and then they die. So I need a collection system to get them. And I also have to work on this thing, the stone slab ceiling above the farm. So it kind of throws off the light level because I don't have the whole thing covered. So it doesn't spawn as many in the day as it can at night. And another problem with the drowned farm is right here. So for some reason the pathfinding with the drowned, they keep congregating to this spot. And I mean a lot of them are congregating to this spot. I don't know if it's because I'm under the glass and they're pathfinding towards me, or if it's because the glass around the turtle egg is causing them not to see the turtle egg and then fall into here. But it definitely needs to be fixed. So what I'm going to be doing to improve the efficiency, because we care about efficiency, is put in some water streams to collect the salmon, and also use the water streams to improve the pathfinding for the drowned, and also expand the stone roof and change the killing area so that the drowned are funneled into one spot. <laughs> So I've made the adjustments to the drown farm and let's kill some of these guys to see how many drops I can get. So it's definitely spawning a lot of drowned especially since I put the roof on and you can see I have tons of rotten flesh. I have six tridents, some gold, also nautilus shells and salmon and I'll just take you through the adjustments I made. First thing was I expanded the stone slabs on top. This has increased the darkness and now you can see it is in the middle of the day but there are way more drowned spawning and it's spawning a crazy amount of drowned. You can see there's at least 40 there. And I added some water streams just to increase the pathfinding. Although it still seems like they have some issues and they get stuck on the ledge from the water streams. So I might still need to make an adjustment although it's only that area. And the other thing was that the salmon. So I thought I could pick up some salmon by having the water streams like this. But they don't seem to die in here. They seem to actually stay in the water and not die but it's fine because some of the drown picked them up as an item so I still am getting some salmon and now on to the next thing it's kind of crazy I can just fly from the trident farm all the way to my base just by falling off so a few episodes ago I did some building on my base which was a lot of this interior stuff well I noticed a problem while I was doing that well I already knew the problem was there but it came more apparent when I was actually doing that building. And that problem is that my base is wider than it is longer. I don't know if that's the right word to describe it but it looks really weird. It basically is a giant rectangle but it should be a square. So I put this green wool frame just to figure out the dimensions of the second level and when I did that you can tell there's not that much space here. And there's a lot of space over here. So one thing I like to do to just check out the dimensions of this is walk up to my base from ground level. So in my Persian garden here. And this doesn't look quite as tall as I imagine it should be. So that definitely needs to be fixed. And it generally just needs to be a little bigger. So what this means, and I'm talking to you wandering trader behind me, is that I need to fix the exterior of my base. Because... It's going to create problems when it comes to my second level and building further on my base. Also, the front of my base looks a bit different than the rest of it. This was an experimentation and I think it looks pretty good. So what I'm going to do is actually use this for my entire base, this style. Not to mention because I have to expand this outwards, 
This means I'm gonna have to remove part of this garden or at least rebuild it. And also this desert hill at the back of my base. Okay, this is going to take a while, so get ready for a big time lapse. A base changing time lapse, if you will. there is the base so I think this looks a lot better it has a lot more depth a lot more blocks involved it's not like one or two and I mean the terracotta looked weird before because it was just blocks as where stairs are being used here and I think this is a lot better so I think this works I still got to put a lot of things into this I still got to put some stairs I got to finish the garden around here I have some ideas and I also need to fill up there and still build a second level but let's move on to the next thing so here I am in my villager trading hall and what that means is I got to do some villager trading. So for these trident enchantments, I'm going to need four of the enchantments. I'll go through them, but this is going to take a while because I have to basically get the villager trades, cure them, and then get the durability back up on the tridents since they really don't have any durability at the moment. This is going to be fun. Let's go through the four trident specific enchantments in Minecraft. First is the impaling enchantment. Impaling will increase the damage to aquatic mobs. The aquatic mobs in Minecraft are cod, tropical fish, salmon, puffer fish, turtles, guardians, elder guardians, and dolphins. Drowned are not an aquatic mob, but are an undead mob. Impaling adds 2.5 extra damage per level. The maximum level is 5. Impaling can add an extra 12.5 damage to aquatic mobs. It can be used with Riptide and will increase the damage you do when you hit a mob while launching yourself with Riptide. Second is the Riptide enchantment. If you are in water, it is raining, or snowing in a snowy biome, Riptide will launch the player in the air when the trident is thrown. The maximum level is 3. The higher the level of Riptide, the greater distance the player will go. 
You still will take fall damage, so Feather Falling Boots or Elytra are helpful. Elytra and a Riptide Trident works very well in the rain as you can fly and won't have to use firework rockets for propulsion. Riptide is incompatible with both loyalty and channeling. Third is the channeling enchantment. It will summon a lightning bolt to hit a mob when it is a thunderstorm and there is sky access. Channeling can be used to turn villagers into witches, pigs into zombified piglins, red mushrooms into brown mushrooms, and creepers into charge creepers. Last is the loyalty enchantment. It allows you to throw a trident and a trident will return to you. The maximum level is 3. The higher the level, the quicker the trident will return to you. Okay, so I've got all of the trident traits, all four of them. It took me quite a while. And I have all of the durability up on all of the tridents. So I put on breaking and mending on there in order to be able to restore the durability through villager trident because you get a lot of XP from that. So now I get to actually enchant this. So I have my three riptide ones and I have my three loyalty ones or non riptide. So unfortunately, it's going to take too many levels to do all of them with enchantments. So I'm just going to do two. So I'm going to do a loyalty one and then hopefully I have enough for the riptide. Let's see which one is the riptide. That one. Yep. And now we're going to have some fun with this one. Well, let's test this out. So I got the loyalty on this. It won't do as much damage, but you can see I throw it. It comes back to me and three hits. It kills them. The other thing with the riptide is you can use it two ways. You can either hit them with a melee attack or you can actually throw the trident like this and it'll come back to me eventually. You can see there. Luckily, I have loyalty, which is really high, so it'll come back really quick. And let's see how this does. So three gold armor is going to take a while. And there you go. So it's a pretty cool weapon because you can use it both for ranged and also melee attacks. And let's do the other fun thing with the... Actually, let's test out the squid first. Ah, that didn't work. There you go. So it pretty much kills the squid on one hit. Now, let's test out the Riptide Enchanted one. So you can see I have the Riptide, I have the Elytra on, and this is where things get fun. So I'm in the water. This also works when it's snowing in a snowy biome. So something like Snowy Tega, or if it's raining, Raining is really fun. You should really try that out. So basically what you do is you throw it in the air. You can see I'm up in the air. Then I hit glide. And then I can glide with my Elytra. So that at least saves me one firework rocket. But it's really fun if you use it when it's raining. So that was today's episode. Thank you guys for watching.